self-taught day trader with over 10 years experience. Melissa's specialty is trading strategy focused on shorting stocks that gap. Melissa also appears frequently uh, as a stock chart, stock market expert. Watch Melissa on RT America, Cheddar TV, CBS, Fox News, and Fox Business News. Uh, okay, Melissa, well, great to have you on, a first time speaker with us. Uh, the game is that you have until five minutes before the hour. Um, we will post a link to your products in the chat box on the right at the end, and then we'll go out and hand out more of our $100,000 in prizes. Wonderful. So with that, I shall uh, mute myself and uh, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. I'm very excited today. And really this entire year of 2022 has been a very exciting time to trade. You know this for those of you that are here, if you have been actively trading this year, we've had tremendous volatility. And really that has made for lots of opportunity for active traders. So what do I do? What I do is gaps. But today specifically, we're going to talk about trading on the side of institutional money and how doing that can mean that you have profits. Today is a good day to talk even about this because what is happening right now as we speak, the market closes at four o'clock Eastern time. I suspect we will close down on the day and we were up at one point actually this morning in the pre-market and, and at one point on the day and we've been following. So it's been a wild ride for traders this year. Whereas last year in 2021, you could have bought virtually anything, weak stocks, strong stocks, the overall market, by that I mean the QQQs or the S&P, or the SPY, which is ETF for the S&P, and made money. You could have bought every dip in the market. You could have bought weak stuff, strong stuff, and made money. That is not the case this year. First of all, that's not how I've ever traded. I started trading in 2008, and it took me about three years to develop my own system, which I've been doing ever since. But overall, my philosophy is that it doesn't matter what type of market it is. You really should know how to trade no matter what in any type of market environment, in a controlled market, in a bullish market, in a bearish market, in a volatile market, and the type of market we're in right now expected to continue for most of 2022. I don't think this changes anytime soon. And I have found that people are not doing well this year that are reaching out to, reaching out to me and they're looking for different strategies, different trading systems, different subscriptions for ideas, for trade ideas, because they overall are not seeing the same things right now this year since the beginning of January that are not working that they did last year, okay? So if you have any questions, you can plop it in the chat. I can see the chat on the side and I'm gonna get started here and again. Today, we're gonna talk about institutional money. Now, <laughs> if you want to talk to me, I do answer the phone. If I don't answer your call, you can always leave me a message and I will call you back. I try to return phone calls within 24 to 48 hours. I might be trading on TV or like I'm talking in a webinar today. My phone number is 929-3200-GAP and you can also email me at melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can follow me on Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, or Skype. And also you can watch me on many other channels where I've been talking about the market. The irony is when I watch some of the shows that I appear on if I'm not on that particular day and I notice how people are saying buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip. They've been saying this all year and they've been wrong. I have not been saying that. We are going to talk about that in a little bit here. But the time for opportunity really is now. Why? Because if you know how to capitalize on the moves we're having in the market, you can really make bank. Today, again, is a great example. And if we have time, I'll go look at the charts at the end. I can't flip back and forth without stopping the share. We'll see where we stop here with the lecture day if I have time to look at where we close right before four. But again, I believe we're going to close down today. If you shorted the market today or if you were in puts from last week in today, you are up. You are making money, okay? When a lot of people thought that we were going to move higher, this thing, that thing, the other thing. I don't make decisions based on fundamentals. I make decisions based on technical analysis. We will discuss that today as well. But if you're not going to trade now, and if you're not going to make money trading now, then when? Again, the type of market environment we had last year was very, very rare. By rare, what do I mean? If you take look at 10 years of the market, you might be able to trade like that one of those years. Or 12 of years of the market, you might be able to trade like that one of those years. It was not a normal year last year. And to be honest with you, <coughs> I specifically thought it was very strange. Every time we came out with economic data, this is since the COVID drop off, which is exactly, exactly two years from now. It is March of 2022, two years ago. I remember it very well. I live in New York City. I live in Manhattan. I never left, even in COVID. 
It was two years ago, right this weekend, when the whole world shut down, and specifically in New York, it was a disaster. And we had that bounce right after that steep sell-off with terrible economic data over and over and over again, and the market kept getting bought. It wasn't going to last. It wasn't going to last. And now you're seeing that right now, like I said, since the beginning of this year. But today, hopefully, you will walk away. You will learn something. You can write questions in the room as we go along, and I'll answer them as well. So let's talk about trading on the side of institutional money. What do I mean by institutional money? Big, big money, power money, power money in the market, lots and lots and lots of money, hedge funds, big institutional traders, big banks, okay? They have trading desks, they train. Not retail traders, I'm talking about huge, massive, massive positions, hedge funds, okay? Power money that can move a stock or the market. You've got to trade with this power money. You don't need to wait for pullbacks. And many times, if you do, you will miss the move. You've got to learn what to trade. And as I said earlier, I trade gaps. We will discuss what a gap is, but it's really momentum, okay? It's gap trading is really momentum trading. If you buy a stock and it's going up, you're going to make money. If you short a stock and it's dropping, the price is dropping, you will make money in the drop. Shorting, okay? I clipped this here from two to a little bit after two today. This is a daily chart of the QQQs. Again, momentum. Let's go all the way back to the beginning of the year. January 3rd. Here we go. This is a daily, daily chart of the Qs. So the QQQs have not made it at any new highs at all this year in 2022. And yet, people bought the pullback, people bought the pullback. People bought the pullback, bought the pullback, bought the pullback, bought it, bought it, bought it, bought it, bought it. People are along right now buying the pullback, okay? That has failed the entire year of 2022. So how do you make money in the market? How do you make money consistently? How do you make money month over month, week over week, day over day, year over year? You have to do something that consistently works, okay? And what I'm saying to you is buying the pullback does not consistently work. I'm clipping a chart here just so the market, I could have pulled up a million different things I'm just talking about this specifically. So say you're someone that's been losing the last week, the last month, the last six months, the last six years, you need to change what you were doing. You cannot continue doing the same actions and expect any different results. You're gonna to continue to lose if you're doing the same thing. If you want different results in your trading, you've got to change. Change is required. And not only that, it's necessary, okay? And you have to take actionable steps to do something about that if you want to actually make money, if you're losing. Now, maybe you're never trade, you've never traded in your life. You don't know how to trade. Well, then you've got to learn, okay? You've got to learn how to trade before you actually do it. Otherwise, how are you gonna get the results that you, that you want, okay? But it is so important for people to change what they're doing, and the sooner the better. And I find, again, I've been teaching people now for 10 years, and I have a lot of experience doing that as well now, besides trading, I, I find that for traders specifically, it is very difficult for them to get out of a rut. If they've been doing something for a long time, it's so hard, even if they're losing, for them to change what they're doing. But there's nothing scary about change. Change can be wonderful, change can be great. You should not be afraid to change. And very often, it's, it, it can really totally improve what you're doing, improve your life, and improve your trading results. Getting back to what I was saying about the buying the dip doesn't work, I want to show you a chart of the SPY because the SPY did make brand new all time highs at the beginning of this year. This chart looks different than the Qs. But we are still trending down. So we made a brand new all time high right at the beginning of the first week of the year. This was the SPY. This is the ETF for the SP. Then we fell, 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 falling today. Again, I clipped this today like around one o'clock. Either way, we're trending down today. Another great example, we're buying the dip doesn't work, and yet many, 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 many traders continue to do it. And again, I'm gonna go back to my example of 2021. And even late 2020, buying the dip did work many times in the market. The market seemed to make endless all-time highs all of 2020. And as I was saying, that was highly unusual and really, quite frankly, looking back, didn't make much sense. But sometimes the market doesn't make sense. Sometimes we will have good data and the market will fall. Sometimes you have a bad economic report or a bad earnings report in a stock and it will rally. 
So you can't always look at the fundamentals to make trading decisions, and that's why I look at charts. That's why I have these charts in here today. They are daily, daily charts, okay? But one of the cornerstones to everlasting trading success is consistency. Without this, it's hard to stay in the market for any length of time. And again, if you've been training for a long time, you know this. In order to be consistent, a person needs proper focus on what counts. And for me, it's the price action, okay? And if you've been somebody that has been trying to be successful for years, but the success has always eluded you, you've got to take a step back and ask yourself why. Probably you're not doing a strategy that works consistently, okay? And you really need to understand why you're doing it or at the very least follow someone that does have a good system, even if you don't understand it. But I find really when people learn something, they trade much, much better, okay? And it will help them break those habits, those bad habits that they've had, if they've had bad habits in the past. But it is important if you're going to trade, particularly in this type of market, that you know what you're doing. Because like I said, the volatility that we're seeing right now, so far this year, I do not think it changes anytime soon. So becoming a successful trader or investor really requires becoming a specialist in defining where the institutions, again, getting back to the power of money, are buying or selling a stock. Because again, if you can get in before the big move happens, whether it's up or down, that's how you're gonna make money, okay? And I pinpoint this in gaps. And again, I'm going to discuss this with you and explain to you what a gap is. But it's all in the chart, okay? It's called advanced technical analysis, where I'm looking at past price data to predict future price data. And that is what I do. I predict what's going to happen in the future by reading the gaps. So I look at the past prices on a daily chart and I predict what will happen in the future, okay? That is a skill. It's a skill that I've developed over the course of you know 13 years of trading. It is something that you can learn. Can you learn it in a day? Can you learn it in a weekend in my class? Maybe, they say when you take a class, you retain 80% of the information right after the class, but you'll learn enough to be able to take it forward to start to trade on your own, and then you ask me questions after the fact. Some people do the class and right out of the gate, they learn it so well, they're starting right out of the gate on the Monday after the weekend class and do great. But I think it is so important for people, if they're losing money, to change what they're doing. And again, part of it is being honest with yourself. It's like when you trade, you're working for yourself. And I'm an independent person. I trade in my apartment in Manhattan. No one's checking over me to see if I'm doing the right things or not, to see if I'm sizing myself right or not. No one's checking over you. You're not reporting to a boss like you have a regular job. You have to be responsible for yourself. This is an individual thing that you're doing. Okay, You, all, you have to have an entrepreneurial spirit if you are one to trade. And if you want to trade and work for yourself, you have to have that independent streak. That has to be part of what you want, part of what you desire, part of your passion to work for yourself or make money for yourself or make extra money for yourself. If you have a job and you want to trade on the side, that's fine too. But again, it's the passion of doing it that drives you forward to invest or trade in the market. And you do it within the time that you have available during the week. Now, getting back to what I was saying, reading the footprints of institutional money, it's big big money, millions and millions and millions and hundreds of thousands of shares that come in. So it's not like a tiptoe, okay? Not like a baby step, it's big money, okay? Let's take a look at this chart here. Again, we're looking at the daily. This is, these are all in the daily. This is a stock chart of Boeing. Again, very good example here. Going back to the beginning of the year, here was Boeing. Boeing actually, unlike the market, did rally at the beginning part of the year. It was nowhere near the highs. If you know this stock, the last time it made a new high was several years ago, way, way, way before COVID this started to drop off. Anyways, what is happening here in Boeing? Just Let's just look at here at the beginning of March. This is today, let's take it up. March 1st was here. How did we start out in March? Boom, boom, boom. Price over here was what? Around 204, got the drop down in here. We fell from 204, this is beginning of March, and again, I don't know where we're closing this today. This point down here was well below 170, 166 and change. So what is happening here? Institutional money has been selling, selling Boeing. Okay, it's not getting bought. The red bars here depict selling, the green bars depict buying. There's a lot of red bars here. And we're talking about the month of March here for this chart, okay? So again, institutional money is selling, 
or shorting, okay, pushing the stock price down in Boeing. And you could say for whatever reason, this thing, that thing, the news, Russia, whatever, the fact is no new money is buying in here. Therefore, if you were going long, you'd be losing, okay? Any questions here so far? Let's look at PayPal, institutional money. Again, this is what we're discussing. Let's go back to the beginning of February. Stock price in here, end of January, take it over, was well over 170. Stock had earnings, again, whatever they said, who knows, who cares. On the earnings, the stock price gap down under 140, fell off a cliff. Today, and again, I don't know where this is gonna to close today, the price is well below $100 a share. So this is just in the last couple of weeks. So look where this stock was before the earnings. Look where it is now today. It's almost lost half its value, actually. So again, institutional money is dumping, dumping their positions in PayPal. This is a short. We did many, 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 many shorts in PayPal. We day traded this, we did puts in this. A put is an option where it's basically a short. You can take it overnight. You could have done a swing trade in PayPal to the downside, would have been a short, okay? Again, institutional money controls stocks. Even when you think it's not there, it is. And in the case of both of these, it's being pushed down, sold off, dumped. Actually, down here is the volume. You can see the huge, massive volume on this particular day, on this day here that was February 2nd, okay? And again here, we'll talk about the market. Just like example, I'm just gonna go back to Friday. Friday was a day, and I'm gonna go over what a gap is in a minute, but we closed here, gapped up Friday morning, fell off a cliff, gap down today, fell. But I will point out that we were up in the futures last night. We were actually up at one point this morning, okay? And then we opened lower, and then we sold off. So let's just, just go back the last 24, 48 hours. What is all this? Selling, selling, boom, boom, selling. Again, tomorrow is Tuesday. I don't know where we gap in the morning, but I look for the gap when I get up in the morning in the pre-market, and I rate it using my system to determine and predict the direction it will go to take a trade tomorrow, okay? Or I might be already in options for tomorrow that I might still be in, which we can talk about later. But the point is, again, this is what? This is selling. Selling shorts, boom. And this is a cue. We talked about this earlier. Remember when I said, this does not look like the SPY. So SPY has been slightly stronger than the cues this year. For whatever reason, it doesn't matter. Um, these are everyday charts. I'm describing to you the institutional money. There's nothing special about these charts. If you pull up this chart of the QQQs or this chart of PayPal, you can pull up this chart, any platform you have anywhere, you go to freestockcharts.com. I'm verbally describing to you what's happening here in the gap, and that is what I'm gonna talk about a little bit. I'm describing institutional money to you. Your chart is gonna look just like this. You may not see it this way, that's the whole point what I was getting back to earlier in reference to the market and doing things that do not work. Many people have been looking at the market in a certain vision. If you lined up 100 traders, every one of them would tell you something different that's going to happen tomorrow morning when they get up or today into the close or whatever. Who's going to be right? The one that predicts it correctly, the one that gets in the trade before it happens, the one that predicts what's going to happen before it happens. How do you make money? You get in before the move happens. After the fact, it's too late. So everyone has a different viewpoint of this. I'm showing you, describing this, just talking out loud. Your chart's gonna look like the same like mine. I hope that answers your question. If not, let me know. But there is a level of, char there's a level of commitment, getting back to what I was saying, when you see institutional money, I don't care if it's up or down, there's a level of commitment that comes in, like say you were running a hedge fund. <coughs> and you had $2 million, you're not going to come in and buy a stock like Boeing, for example, and spend $2 million, buy a huge position, and then quick sell it in an hour or a day, okay? There's a level of commitment that comes in with institutional money based on many, many other factors and reasons that we don't have any, we're not privy to. So again, there's a level of commitment, and that is something that I think traders forget as well. You didn't see that level of commitment in some of the Reddit stocks. Why? 
they had big spikes up and immediately flat line, sold off and flat line. You're seeing that now in many things, people are still long. There was no big institution of money behind some of those moves. They had the move and it was boop, done. There was no commitment. All of the stocks we trained were looking for commitment. The commitment could be up, the commitment could be down, okay? But commitment is funded by big money and that makes it very easy as one individual to trade. And how do you make more money then? You plop on the size. No, this isn't this is a this is my platform here, but I'm saying if you want a free free platform, you can go to freestockcharts.com. And you can make them look like mine. This is Orbis. So commitment has a plan of action. They're making decisions, these hedge funds based on research reports, based on news, based on a lot of information that you don't know. And again, you're not getting the same news information that these places are. Big banks have information we don't have, okay? And we never will. But we can see what's happening in the charts. And again, you can have a, an account at any broker as long as you have live data. Everybody's going to see the same price, okay? So if you learn how to read the footprints of big position players before the momentum occurs, you can take the position in the right direction and get out after the move happens for profit. But you have to understand how to trade with the side of power. You need to know how to find it, again, before it comes in. It's very important to find it because this power has the ability to pay you. I try to find the best entry I can in my positions. Where I get out varies because... You have more flexibility if you're in something pretty early to hold it if you want to or get out quick because you have a good, good entry and you've got to be in the right direction. But that's the case in anything you do. Knowing how to read what institutional money looks like is essential to becoming a successful trader and you can win big trading on the side of power. And again, particularly in these markets, why? Volatility doesn't necessarily mean selling. Vol like you saw the market up Friday. Friday morning, the market got bought up in the pre-market. It fell in the day. But it, buying came in in the pre-market from Thursday night into Friday morning. Volatility is something that happens that's unexpected. Unexpected. And that is what creates a volatility. Could be buying, could be selling. But getting back to what I was saying, institutional money is in charge of the market and stock at, at all times. Even if you think it's not, it is. A big flow of money going a certain direction is what moves the market stocks, creates momentum, and sets the trend in charts. Getting back to what I was saying. I'm going to talk about gaps in a minute here, but it's really momentum. Momentum trading, that is what I'm doing. When you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading the side of the power in a stock. You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And that is the, the thing right now. It's not there in certain things that people are long. It is not there. Again, these aren't any special charts. I'm telling you, I'm reading it, that it's not there. Reading price is a skill set. Like if you want to go and you want to play tennis, you go take tennis lessons, you play, play, play. My father's a golfer. He's a really good golfer. He's been golfing forever. He's a good golfer. The more you read price, the better you get. I'm reading price, though, in a very specific way based on the gap. Now let's talk about what is a gap. This chart is Netflix. <laughs> this was back at the uh, end of January. Stock had earnings. Stock closed here, gap down. What is a gap? A gap is a distance to the close in the open. Netflix, before the earnings, was up here. Take it over. It was roughly around 500 and change. Closed at 4 o'clock at night. The U.S. market has a close and open. Closes every night at 4 o'clock. Opens in the morning at 9.30. Boom. Open after the earnings. This fell out overnight. I don't have that data here. I'm showing the close and I'm showing the open. I'm showing the gap. It opened here around three something it was under 400 so this is a gap down a gap is a difference between the close and the open this closed here gap down here what about this guy over here closed here gapped up closed here again whatever price this was around 370 ish open up four o'clock 9 30 here it is rallied you could have gone long that day and made money could have shorted here and made money. Now, can you go long every gap up? No. Can you short every gap down? No. No, you can't. 
Friday was a good example of that. Going back to the market, the market gapped up Friday morning, sold off like a hot cake. If you went long, you lost. So you have to find the good ones, the ones that what? The institutional money is going to grab it, grab hold of, and take it, take it in the direction of the gap. So it's about pinpointing that little tiny, tiny thing that's going to come in with momentum. And again, as I've been defining this, is it, it's a skill set. It's something that you learn. And think of it like a sport. Again, if you're good at a sport, you know, you got, you didn't get good the first day you learned it. You got good by practice over and over. And from teaching people for a long time, <clears throat> I find that people skip around a lot. They do thing after thing after thing after thing after thing. They'll do futures, they'll do options, they'll do Bitcoin, they'll do this thing, they'll buy the dip, they'll whatever. They will never stick with anything. And so therefore they never get good at it. And they will never stay with anything. And therefore they never really get good at anything. And they never become an expert and they don't make money in the market. How did I end up sticking on this thing? I learned very easy, early on that sticking with one thing was important. And I realized also I only needed one trade a day actually to make money when I started trading. And I also go to the short side first, even though I do belong. I go to the short side first and I learned that that has given me an edge because many traders do not know how to short. And it will always be that way. Why? People are more comfortable going long. They understand the process and the whole concept of buying low and selling high. So they prefer to go long than short. So the fact that I know how to short and I'm an expert in shorting actually gives me an edge. I do go long though. We went long. We did calls in XOM and CVX or oil charts. I have one of them in here. And they worked. They worked. So I will go long. But because I became an expert in shorting, I realized then how to read longs after that as well. But many traders fail because they skip around from thing to thing to thing, and they never really get good at any one specific thing. One thing is all you need. You duplicate it, add size, do it you know, as an option, do it as a day trade, do it as a swing trade. One strategy is all you need, and that's another thing that traders don't do either. So again, if you have any takeaway today, tip of the day here is Sox Wish Tip of the Day. Stick with one thing. Get good at it. Duplicate it, add size. That's how you move forward. If you never get good at something, well, then how are you ever going to make any real money? Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, my strategy is based on gaps, but I called it the golden gap once I figured it out because it's like finding gold of the market. And some of the calls I've made this year actually have been like finding gold. They've been amazing calls. Even the people that are, some of them were on my options newsletter subscription list, I know some people killed trades last week that they did not believe in. They didn't have conviction in and they regretted it since some of them jumped in late. It's one of these things where if you understand what to do, you're going to do so much better, so much better because this market is tricky and it'll trip you up, trip you up, trip you up. And I, like I said, don't think it's going to end anytime soon. Let's get back to what we were discussing. What is a gap? Here's Amazon. We did this one too. Stock closed here, gap down, fell. Closed at certain prices was the first week of March. Take it over here to the right. Was already under 3,000, gap down, boom. I do not day trade Amazon. I'll do this as an option. It is still expensive doing that, but the stock can rock and roll. Just looking here from this gap down, again, take it over. It was roughly around 2930-ish. Here's the momentum. Here's the selling. Here's an institutional selling right in here. This was this day here. Gap down the next day, fell off the planet, gap down, boom. See where this went. Broke 2,700. Look at this. This is all the money in the world for you to make. If you were long, you lost. Okay. So again, we played this. This was institutional selling. I didn't do this today, but you could have actually. You could have done this today. And I don't know where this closed today. I took this early. I'm sure this kept going. But this is expensive to do. Anyways, this is a gap, and this is a gap, and this is a gap too, okay? Talked about this. What is a gap? What also did we talk about institutional money? What happened here really since the end of February? This is getting bought. So many traders want to get tricky, 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 tricky. They want to short it. They want to short this thing. I guarantee you a trader shorted this today. It's going to keep going. I, I you know. I mean, I don't know where this opens tomorrow, but again, people shorted this today. So foolish. Foolish with a capital F. 
one of the strongest things in the market right now. It's stronger than the market, actually, right now, this. So, what is a gap? Closed here, stock closed here, gapped up. This is Chevron, ticker symbol CVX. Closed here, gapped up, rallying. Closed here, gapped up, rallying. We did 160 calls, we did 170 calls, we did a bunch of different ones in here. They worked. So again, a call is an option where you're buying. The momentum here is up. These are getting bought. Again, why? You could say this thing, that thing, oil, Ukraine, whatever. It doesn't matter. I'm reading the gap and I'm predicting when I get up in the morning and I see this here up. Actually, we did this here. Let's talk about this one. This is the one I called the 160s. This closed here, this capped up. I said, up. Oh, oh, this is going to keep going. And we entered it and we went long and then it took off like a rocket the next day. So this is buying. So you can get in here. You can get in here. Boom. That's the money. You take it, get out. Take it, get out. How do you make money in the market? As a trader, you're in, you're out. You chunk it, chunk it out. Take the trade, get the move, get out. Again, momentum, momentum, momentum. And again, here's the volume down here. I guarantee you traders shorted this today. I think this is going to fall. And they're going to get, I, I, you know, I'll look at this tomorrow, actually. I'll look at this all week. That's not going to happen. Any questions here so far? So how do you find gaps? A million places. It's really not hard to find them. It's not hard to find them. They're all over the place. The market gaps almost every single day. We don't play the market every day. I look at it. Stocks gap on earnings. A gap on news. <coughs> Stocks gap in sectors. Again, financial data. All kinds of things. So it's really not hard to find them. It's hard to find the good ones. The good ones. That's what takes the, the know-how. But gaps are a secret ingredient in charts that many people overlook and they don't understand them and they hold a lot of significance, which is the reason that I focus on them. Gaps make the trend, set the trend, and continue the trend in stocks in the market. They set the trend because they're a definitive and demonstrative change in show price in what is called an event. Gaps are a real show of the power of money. Again, what happened in CVX? Power money is buying that. Institutional money is buying that. There's no way this chart would one day be here, forget about the price point, just don't even forget about that, that it one day would be 135 and the next day it would be at almost 175. That was in a week. It was in a week. So, gaps are a real show of the power of money. Gaps either continue the trend or in fact change the trend. If you follow the gap, we will be following the power of money. And again, gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. However, some gaps are better than others and some gaps are nothing gaps, so I don't trade them. And then some do the opposite. <laughs> some do the opposite and I don't do that either, okay? But the most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change in direction or a bigger move in the same direction. That's what you want to do. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will help you to know what to do and when a change is occurring. That is how you know when the power of money will flow with you to pay you. And again, we go long and we go short, but I do go to the short side first. So my whole system is based on rating the gap in the pre-market, or you can do in the post-market. You know, I usually like to do my stuff in the morning, I'm a morning person. Again, I live in Eastern Time Zone in New York, but I have a checklist. If you wanted to come and learn from me, that is what you'd learn. My gaps when I decide to do something has to be qualified. It's called calculated risk. How do you make money in the market? You have to risk your own money. This is not gambling. I'm not going to go long and short the same stock the same day. That's gambling. You don't have a conviction in anything if you're doing that. If you take a trade, kill it, go back in the opposite direction and kill it again. That's what people are doing in this market. They're doing that in Apple. They're doing it in, in Boeing. They're doing it in the overall market. Okay. Not all gaps, though, are created with institutional money. The checklist tells me what to look for in the price of the stock, okay? It is calculated risk. I am determining that based on this, it is going to go up or it is going to go down. It is not a 50-50 for me. Now, does that mean that every trade I take wins? No. No, it does not. Some trades I take lose. That's why I have to size myself, position sizing, okay? And I do use stops for day trade. I do not use stops for options. <laughs> the stop is the risk, but I do have a lot of winning trades, more winning trades and losing trades, and that's the only way 
that you can really ever get anywhere with this. While it is true that some trades have big percentages of returns on investment, that is not should not be your expectation. A normal trade is one to one. If you're risking 500 and you're up 480, that's out, get out. Again, it is about chunking it out. While you could risk 500 and make 2000, that should not be your daily expectation. Talk about that Amazon. There's a gentleman that's been with me for a very short period of time. He's been doing very well. I guess he just has a lot of confidence in me because he didn't even do the class yet. He's on the options newsletter. He was up a lot of money in Amazon. He did make money in it, but he got piggy. He got piggy with it and then he had he didn't have a good exit. I said, you should have got out of this. And he got out of it with money, but he was up even more two days before. So, you know, you cannot be piggy with your trading. Active trading is you're in, get the move, get out. You're in, get the move, get out. You're in, get the move, get out. And that's what you do. You do a different thing every day. You know, you do a couple things one day, nothing the next day for doing options. If you're doing day trades, you do a different thing, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, okay? It's active. And again, the volatility demands, demands that you're trading that way. Because the worst thing that can happen to you is you're up in a position and then reverses against you and you didn't get out. Okay, don't forget to book the money when you're in stuff and you're up. Any questions here? But anyways, it's, it's about power money and that's the whole thing. And it's not a little bit of money, it's a lot of money. Power money's in charge, it's in charge of the stock at all time. And a lot of people talk negatively about hedge funds and, and you've seen that in the last year, even on TV, but it's the reason that one individual can be successful in the market, me and you. Because the fact is, unless you're gonna start a hedge fund, you're not gonna be able to move a stock. It's just not gonna happen. And so this is really, a lot of this is common sense. A lot of what I do is really based on common sense. And again, I try to teach that when we're in the class. Following power of money is really how you're gonna make money in the market and reading the price. And a lot of times what happens is when fundamental information comes out or news, it's too late. Oftentimes you see the market reacting to something, like even today, I don't know why we sold off today, I don't care. I'm sure I'll watch the news tonight, they'll talk about it tonight or tomorrow morning. This is always the case when it happens, but it is very important for you to focus on the right thing. It is very important for you to not act like trading is gambling because it is not. And trading momentum, like I said, makes it easier if you have a thousand shares of something, you can get a dollar drop, two dollar drop, you can be short something and make money and you don't have to take some ridiculous position. I do not trade penny stocks or little tiny little stocks or cheap stocks or low float stocks. We do stocks that are companies that you know of, that you've heard of, Facebook, PayPal, all of the things that we're talking about here. And once you understand what to do, it makes it a lot easier to press the button because the money is gonna come and you understand the stock and you understand momentum. So again, what is a gap and why gaps? A gap is a difference between the close and the open. They happen every day. It happens every day in the ETFs of the market. And usually the QQQs and the SPY trade the same direction on any given day, okay? Usually they're both gapping up or they're both gapping down. Sometimes I look at the diamonds, which is ETF for the Dow, but I focus mostly on the Qs and the SPY. We did talk about this, this is a Netflix. Again, this fell today as well. <coughs> this closed here, gap down here fell, this was earnings. Again, sometimes things gap for earnings. Sometimes things gap with new international news. Sometimes things gap because of a CEO got fired or quit. This was Facebook, we did this one too. This was back at the end of January into the beginning of February, this was earnings as well. This stock is another one that has taken a tumble this year. This is way before the Russia Ukraine situation as well. Stock was up here around 320, gap down here in the morning, and open here well below 240. This was back February 3rd. Fell, fell, fell. We did a bunch of trades in this. What? To the downside. We did puts. We shorted it as a day trade. It fell. Okay. This sold off. All right. We talked about this here. This was the overall market. This was the high of the year. This is falling. Anyways, every day I look to try to find one pick. I go through my checklist and that's how I do it. And let's talk about a couple trades we did. Three, two. Now, this was a day trade. This doesn't even look like much, but it was a nice trade. This was Zoom. Stock close here, gap down, fell. This taily thing here, we did. We got in and we got out on the drop, boom, done. Again, you don't have to sit around all day and wait, 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 wait. 
we did this as a quick day trade. We were in and out. Now, what is the difference between a day trade and option? On a day trade, an equity trade, you need margin. You have to have a margin account. So the entry here was 117.50. Oh, this I forgot the eight here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Initial position size was 800 shares. Risk was 3,440. You can risk half. So you could have taken 400 shares and risk 1,500 bucks. You have to have margin or equity to take a position size, whatever it is, 800, 500, or 100. Again, you open up an account at a broker, they give you something called buying power or margin. If you don't understand that, you can Google it, look it up, or you call your broker and find out. In order to day trade, you have to be able to get in and out. We were in and out of our trades quick. This was on the same day. As you see here, this bounced. So we got in and out fast. I'll show you the one minute chart in a minute. I added to this, same price, added, doubled up. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Knew it was gonna drop, got the drop. Exit, 114.75. Again, this is almost a $3 drop. What happened here, it got sold off. This is selling. So we shorted it, got the selling, got the bounce, got out, boom. Profit, 4,400. Again, you could have risked half this. You could have doubled up. You could have taken 400 shares. You could have added here, had 800 shares total, and you could have made 2,200. Now let's look at the one minute. So this was the day, March 2nd. So again, we're on the Zoom, okay? Here is the selling. Do, 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 do. It actually came all the way down almost to 114. Um, you can see here where this was in the morning. So this is a day trade, and we enter the trade on the one minute. I put the stop in, I get the sell off, then I get out. I am calling these trades live in the day trade room. Okay. So again, this may not look like much here, oops, but this is a profit, a nice profitable trade. Again, it is pinpointing and finding that little tiny little gap in there and seeing that was gonna go down Okay. I did not look at Zoom today and see what that did. I'm sure this, this fell as well with the market. But when I was talking about, I had I put this one in here because it, it was a it was a decent trade. It wasn't some huge trade, but I put it in here. We did this a bunch of different days in the last two weeks, but we shorted the tail. It flipped. I'm gonna show you the one minute. We actually shorted this here. This closed here. This gap down dropped. We got in out. It flipped in the day. Crazy. Then it gap down the next day. Then I fall off a planet. This was an easier day to do it as a day trade, but we got in and out with money there because it was profitable. It was 228. But anyways, the crazy thing about this was that this flipped on that day, but we were way out of this before that even happened. Again, here is the day. We entered at 198.50, 1,500 shares. Risk was 2,700. Exit 196.90. Again, that is a move. A buck 50, buck 60, in, out, in, out. Take it, get out. Again, this is not an exact science. If you're risking 2,700, you're up 2,400, starts to bounce out. Again, you're trying to make one-to-one -one or as close to that, but this is not an exact science. We actually did have a low of the day exit in this. That is not the case in all my trades, but we did on that one. But again, you could have done this so many different times in the last week too. This was the first week of March. Here's one minute. Stock close here, gap down. Again, this is the day before. This is the day we did it. Again, 228. We got in, got the drop, out, boom, done. You're in and out. Sometimes we're in and out in trades in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, three minutes, okay? Day trading is active. You're in and you're out. That's the whole thing about doing it. We're looking for the institution of money. Where does it flow? We're trying to play the move. We're playing momentum. We're in and we're out of it. Now when I'm doing options, I may hold for a longer move, but still it's not like I'm doing the weekly options. If it has a move in the day, I'm out. you know. Or if I take a couple things and I think the market's gonna go in a certain direction, I may hold half the things, get out of half the things, but it's the whole idea of booking money. We did talk about returns. You should be looking for one-to-one -one when you're taking a trade. Now let's talk about options. We were talking about day trades there. Day trades, you need margin. If you want to open up an options account, you can open up a cash account, and you don't need margin, okay? Again, talk to your broker about that. But everything I do even with options is based on the gap, too. So we did Facebook. We did Facebook here, 113. See this red bar here? This little tiny thing doesn't even look like much. We were in it. I called the trade. I'll show it to you in a minute. Then it gapped down. Then it gapped down. This thing here. It was money. 
may not even look like anything. I called the 330 puts on 113 and Facebook that expired January 21st. Now, this is an options newsletter. The trades are emailed to you. Now, this isn't part of the live room. This is a subscription service. This is an advanced uh, uh, trader risk or beginner risk, whatever you want to use. Cost was 380. Three contracts, risk was 1140, sold at 12, profit 2460, return on investment 216%. That's a beautiful trade. I'm going to go back and show you. So 330. Take it over, drop, see where it dropped? So that was right at the money. Actually, it was a little bit into it there from the time that that opened. And then again, here's the drop. And this, this may not even look like much, but it was profitable because it kept going down. Price of these has really gone up at the, at the money though, since that was way back January for puts, but that was a nice trade. We did Netflix too. We did this as well on the 13th. 13th, let's find the 13th here. 13th of January here. So this closed here, this gap down. Let's see the ones I called, 520s. Now, I put this in here for a reason. Again, your risk should be the same or equal to the same. If you're risking 1,000, 1,200, one contract costs 1,350, you could have done one. So if you're risking 1,350 here and you're risking 1,140 here, you know, you gotta stay within those parameters. Now, the, the trade before, the close before the earnings, which would have been the day before, which would have been the 20th, you would have made 1,050. Nice trade, solid trade, 78%. I showed the close here because I wanted you to show how it, the very last day, which I never hold the last day, unless I'm down in the trade, which I was and I was up in this trade, if you held the last day, this is how much money you would have made. It would have been absurd percentage. Here's why I didn't hold it, because I didn't know what the earnings were gonna do. So the trade was called here, it went. It was up, up, up. The trade was up. The earnings were that night. Anyways, this one here closed, all right? If you had stayed in it to the last day, Again, it was the 520s. It was at around 400. So that's why this was an enormous trade if you held it through. But you would have been risking not just the risk in the trade, you would have been risking the profit. But this shows you, again, the power of the gap. You could have gotten out of half a position if you took two, okay? Or if you took four, you could have got out of two, booked two, held two. So this just shows you, again, the power of the gap, the power of institutional money. But again, trading isn't gambling. And when you're up in something, you're going into the earnings and the very last day and you're already up in it. You know, the normal thing to do, the conservative thing to do would be to book profits. Let's talk about the SPY. Called a trade in the SPY here. I called the 471 puts. Cost was 340, number of contracts three. Again, your risk should be close to equal or similar. Sold at 24, I will show you where this went. If you risked 1,020, you could have made 6180. Return on investment, 606. This was the same day that I called that. This was the drop. Here again, we got this whole thing. That's the money right in there. Again, another one where you could have held into the last day and actually made more money I, did, I didn't do that, and I don't think that, like I said, with Netflix is the right thing to do. This was a very, very profitable trade of over 600% return investment on the 20th, on the day before. But again, how do you do it? Here, it's 470 drops down in here. Again, take it over here. It was well through 450. It dropped 20 some points through the strike. So, I mean, we were talking about institutional money. We've been talking about momentum. The momentum here was capturing this at the very, very, very right time to get the selling, which was all the profit and all the money, to get a trade that was ends up being a 600% return investment. So that was a nice one. Any questions here by anyone? But success or failure, like I said, has to do with the quality of your system and trading should be fun. It should not be stressful. A lot of people, you know, 
which want to go with the crowd, but if you want to trade effectively, you can't go with the crowd because many traders lose. And if you've been attempting to do this for years, you're aware of that. You really have to have an edge if you want to be successful doing that. And for me, it's gaps, but it's really predicting where the stock is going to go, momentum-wise, with the power of money before it does it. And then once you know how to do it, you just duplicate it over and over with size. But it is important to chunk it out. It is important to book money. And it's important to be consistent. You have to be consistent with what you do with the strategy. You have to be consistent with the amount of money that you risk. Um, and, and all of these things are important. You can't risk $1,000 in a trade and $5,000 in another trade. What if the one trade you risk 5000 loses? You could have two trades, one winner, one loser, and be upside down. So you see why consistency is important no matter what. So what do I do? My class is called the Golden Gap Course that I teach people. people. It's my method. And this is the meat and potatoes of everything that I do. The 26 points looks to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock of the day. The course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on an advanced level. It teaches one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the side of power in charts. It teaches support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. It teaches a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps. And it teaches how to get conviction in your trading and the market as a source of wealth by trading with the side of power for consistent profit. And in these times, like, like I was saying, such good trading this year, such good trading this year. Uh, you know, I, I know that people sometimes have to make sacrifices in order to do this. Block time out of your weekend to do the class. Pay the money for the class. Block time out of your life during the week to trade in the morning. You have to make sacrifices if you want to get somewhere. It's like anything that you want to do that is a big goal in life, you have to be willing to make sacrifices. But it's not something that should have to take you forever and ever and ever to do it. You know, once you learn it and do it and start doing it and start making money, also your confidence goes up. You have conviction. You understand. And, and I think when the money comes fast, that helps people too because people are so used to losing. And the convenience of working from home is just a benefit. And this is way before COVID. Way before COVID, it was always nice to trade actually from home. And I've always enjoyed that for the, for the last number of years that I've been doing this. But a lot of people now are working from home their regular jobs. So they have time to trade. They have time to learn. And they want to do it and make extra money on the side. So I say empower yourself to trade. If you want to do it, success is within your grasp. If you'd like to take my class, if you'd like more information, the class is online. I teach it once a month. The next class is March 26th and 27th. It is a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and play stocks that are professional bearish gaps. I am an expert in shorting. That, that has proven to be the case in this particular market. Uh, the class is online. Like I said, class tuition is $69.99. If you're interested, you cannot sign up through the website. You must email me for the sign-up forms at melissa at thestockswish.com. And it is important to book money. Think about what I said. Think about how much money you're risking in the market. Um, and think about what classes you want to do. I'm doing a webinar special for this event where I'm giving the trading room free to the end of 2022 if you sign up for the class this week by Friday the 18th. So again, the class is not this weekend. It's next weekend. If you sign up by this week, Friday, you would also get the trading room free to the end of the year. I do call the live day trades in the room, stops, entries, targets, I do not call options in the room. The options newsletters are emailed to you in live time that is a separate subscription. I have two options for this. Six months for $49.99, which is still a long time, and a lot of newsletters. 12 months for $69.99 for the annual subscription. That's not a class. The trades are just emailed to you. Um, but you can ask me questions even if you're on the newsletter. People do communicate to me, and you can call me as well. But the live trading room is for equity trades, not an options room. If you're interested in options, there's an options newsletter. There are no trials for this. Um, if you would like a trial to the trading room, you can email me and I will give you a trial to the live trading room if you would like for the rest of this week, which is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you want to be in the room to see what we do, you can email me at melissathestockswish.com for the trial and I can send it to you this evening. Check it out or any questions. All right, Melissa, 